Hey guys, welcome to the Blacksmith Chronicles. And this week, I am excited to have my guest with us. I this is a first for me personally. I get to have two guests at the same time, thanks to uh, the technological wizardry. No, I'm just joking. He's not a wizard, but the advancement that he has and the knowledge and wisdom. Sean Tabbitt being able to bring this together and make this happen for us. But I have uh, this week our special guest, Sean Tabbitt and Rod Tucker. And I want the both of these gentlemen just to be able to give you a little bit of a background and understand who they are and why we have these guests with us this week on the Blacksmith Chronicles. So I'll turn it over to Sean. Sean, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, yeah, let me give you a little bit of my background. Uh, married to my wife, Lynette, for goodness, over 22 years now. We've got 10 children, so we have a, a very busy and dynamic household. Uh, ironically for me, I grew up as a, uh, an only child in a single parent family, so didn't have a dad around ever growing up. Uh, so it's been a learning experience and a trip to be a father to 10 siblings and all the chaos that erupts uh, in a house of our size. Uh, by day, I work in the Christian publishing industry, uh, have been in that space for about 10 years. Uh, I've been podcasting for uh, about eight years. Uh, the Sean Tabbitt Show is actually the fourth podcast I've hosted. And so yeah, my life is uh, all about kind of my family, uh, Christian publishing and books, podcasting, uh, coffee, and running. If you follow me on social media, those are kind of the things that I talk about. And Rod? Yeah, thanks for having me. I uh, live in Kalamazoo, Michigan. I'm married to my wife, Anna. We have three adopted kiddos, ages 11, 8, and four, which is easier for me to remember than Sean. I'm not sure if he, he would even know all the ages of his kids. <laughs> I'm a pastor of a church plant in the neighborhood in which I live. It's called the Edison neighborhood in Kalamazoo. It's very poor. It's very urban. And my wife and I have had a heart for urban ministry for, oh my gosh, our whole lives, I, I feel like. And so we have a church. Our vision is just a simple, sustainable church that empowers the neighborhood. Um, we do that through just reaching out to the community, um, in a bunch of different ways, which I'm sure we'll end up talking about some today, but a lot of what has shaped me is that I am 37 years old and my parents are 39 years recovering drug addicts and alcoholics. So I grew up in the recovery scene. And although that was very different than the church scene at the time, I'm seeing a lot of uh, the movement of vulnerability, transparency, honesty, which then opens up a whole world for what the spirit of God can do in our lives in incredibly supernatural ways. And I'm seeing those collide today, especially with the urban poor. And so that's a little bit of me written a couple books and have done a lot of uh, different things with Sean. And so we are excited to be on this podcast and just have a little reunion together with you. Well, the both of you are definitely a lot further north than I am right now. Uh, so I imagine it's a little colder in this moment, but uh, I'm trying to rub it in nevertheless. But, uh, you know, it's just, it's very fascinating for me to actually say, wow, I'm talking to somebody from Kalamazoo. That's one of those names that, you know, is very significant in a, in a lot of landscapes. And so that's, I, I feel like I've achieved a high level in my life right now at this moment. So life is good. But aside from all of us being married uh, for many number of years and having many children and such, we do also have a love of coffee so that we can uh, co-labor with one another over coffee. So these are great things to have in common, the wife, the children and coffee. <laughs> so those are all good things. But I, of course, did a uh, podcast interview with Sean recently for a book that I had that just came out and got connected with him and just really uh, struck up just a, 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 first of all, respect for what he does uh, in the kingdom, what he does through uh, Christian broadcasting, but then on the level of podcasting. You know, I'm relatively new to the podcast. I'm a podcast junkie. I love podcasts. I listen to them all the time. I listen to different varieties and stuff. But he began to ask me if I knew about um, Rod and, and, and what he'd been doing there. And I, at the time, I just did not know anything. And Sean began to share some of the stuff that you guys have been co-laboring together 
over the number of years. And and these are things that not only are pivotal, important to you, but in, in this process of cultivating the ground and where y'all are at, you you have this heart and this purpose for it. What are some of those things that you guys are working together in, in right now? Uh, I guess I'll start us off. You know, it's interesting. Rod and I actually met through podcasting. Uh, he had a book that came out, I think, in about 2012, 2013, Rod, is that right? Yeah. Uh, published by Kriegel. And back at that time, I was hosting Author Talks with Sean Tabbitt. And somehow uh, I got pitched Rod's book. And so he was a guest on my podcast. And we really just had a fantastic conversation. And that was uh, about a year before we actually met in person. So I, I worked for Baker Publishing Group for about five years, which required me to go to Grand Rapids, Michigan, uh, four or five times a year. And so uh, one of the times I went there, I actually just said, hey, Rod, man, let's go out for dinner. Let's hang out. And our our in-person relationship, I guess you could say, it started over pizza. Uh, and so, Rod, I'd love to have you just share. I know that time we got together, um, you were a little bit kind of unsure or nervous about getting together to hang out. And I think that's a, an important part of our conversation. So share a little bit of that with us. Yeah, Sean ordered a pizza flight and my favorite was the hot dog pizza. And so that's what, that's what I'm comfortable saying right now (laughs) at this point. I'm just kidding. I, uh, I was nervous to talk to you because I was in a place in a church where I was experiencing a lot of hurt and I had put myself out there and I had elevated people in my mind um, because maybe of typical church hierarchy that had said, you know, these people have it together because of the way they talk, the way they present themselves. And the more vulnerable I became because of my recovery background, I quickly learned that not everybody understands that vulnerability breeds trust. And for some unintentionally and not by anything other than, you know, the way that they were raised in the worldview of how Christian performance can drive us into shame-based thinking and faking and just all that stuff we, we, we hear about. Um, I, was, I was nervous to meet someone in the Christian publishing world because I didn't want to have a pseudo relationship where we were talking to each other, but then in the background, just kind of trying to use each other to get ahead. And so I told Sean, I said, this is difficult for me because you seem like you could be a great friend and yet you work for a publisher and I don't want you to feel like I'm using you to try to get a next book out or something like that. And from that point on, I think Sean started to press into some of the hurt I was experiencing and reciprocated vulnerability. And I think that's where true fellowship comes. First John says, if we walk in the light as God is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And although a lot of Christians interpret that as like, if we live in sinless perfection, like we're supposed to, we'll be able to connect with people. I think it's more about vulnerability and being seen and not being afraid to stand figuratively naked in front of each other and say, you know what, you're valuable and you're a value add to my life just because God made you and we're crossing paths because of the spirit. And so that, that was a start of, of our, of our relationship. And then from there, Sean, I'll throw it back to you. I just feel like we found out that we were brothers um, on the same spiritual growth journey. And when things would happen in our lives, uh, we would really kind of rubber band each other forward and pull each other forward um, because we were experiencing a lot of the same things. Yeah, I think uh, once we had a chance to sit down in person, uh, we were both really surprised, uh, maybe even though you know, we came from different backgrounds of, of brokenness and challenge in our families. Uh, we just had so so much to relate to each other about. Um, I, I think uh, we both came away from those, you know, first initial connection points, just kind of feeling like we were long lost brothers, like we were always meant to really be best friends. And uh, it's been really interesting to walk on this journey for, I guess it's six, seven years now. It's been a while. Um, where God has had us like in step with each other. So as as Rod was going through a challenging situation at work or family life or just spiritual formation and journey, I'd be going through the same thing. Or he would take a leap forward and I would take a leap forward. And so it's it's been this interesting 
back and forth where we're sort of in step together in many ways. Um, and just we've really been able to bounce a lot of things off each other, pray with each other. And, uh, you know, interestingly enough, I, I consider Rod one of my best friends, but I think we've actually only seen each other in person maybe 10 times. And, you know, the rest of our relationship is kind of virtual over Skype and texting and whatnot. Yet, uh, you know, I, I think it's fair to say he's one of my best friends in the whole world. This is pretty fascinating to me because I, I can relate to um, what Rod is saying in the sense of you don't want to come across as being um, uh, self-gratifying and, hey, pick me, use me, I, I need all this stuff. But in in that process of that, how how do you recognize that I can get past the way that I feel about self-promotion and actually embrace an authentic relationship, you know, because there is a reality, even let me back up. I'll say it this way. I was going through and I was having a lot of blogs that I had written and they were being published by charisma and Elijah list and spirit fuel and all these others. And every time they would share, I would share it. And I would say, I'm very honored and grateful. They shared this. Here's the link. And one day I'm sharing it and the Lord speaks to me and says, are you? I was like, are you what? And he goes, are you really humbled and honored that they shared this? And I said, well, yes, you know, yes, Lord, I'm very honored, and humbled. And he goes, are you? <laughs> yes, Lord, I'm very honored. I'm humbled. And he, I mean, the conversation literally went to why are you sharing it? And, and ultimately I recognized even in my humility, I was uh, sharing these things to to make a name for myself is what I was doing, even though I was saying I'm very honored and I was humbled. And so I immediately stopped because later that day I heard the Lord say, if you will allow me, I'll teach you how to do this. So, you know, about that time frame, here comes this book contract with this publishing company. And one of the things they want you to do is promote the product, promote, 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 promote. And I was struggling because I was like, here the Lord just ripped me in my false humility and my false, you know, um, you know, appreciation and all this other stuff. How do I walk through this process? So I share that because there really is a point where we recognize I don't want to take advantage of another person, but there is an opportunity where someone in Sean's case can actually help get that word out. So how do you, Rod, embrace that to bring that wall down? Even though you recognize I've dealt with this stuff in the past, I've just got to be able to let my wall down to let this man come in and do what he's gifted and anointed to do. Yeah, I think it's a, it's a little bit of a complicated answer for me because I'm not like everybody else and in, in, in not, not in like a self, I'm not saying that in a self-promoting way. That's funny. <laughs> I'm not like everybody else. Um, <laughs> What happened with me is simply when I am raised in the church basement, watching people be vulnerable with each other and share and have grace for each other. And then I come upstairs and watch everybody um, put a smile on their face and say, I'm too blessed to be stressed. And all of that is going on. It's pretty easy to pick up that one is doing something weird and one is building the kingdom of God. I didn't find out till a lot later what that weird thing was until you start to get behind the curtain in the church scene and specifically in the church scene that is saying we follow the Holy Spirit. And what happens is you see a lot of empire building as opposed to kingdom building. And what I mean by that is I want to build a following for myself. I want to build a following for my church. I want to be a personality and you hear people start to say, I want to be a communicator. And now they're posting YouTube videos of the healings that they're seeing in an effort to, to uh, create followings. And even if their intention is to share the testimony, because we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of the testimony, I think it would be very difficult for any human to not take that and think that they are the famous one when that happens. And so as Sean was involved in this, you know, Holy Spirit supernatural publishing world, you're going to get a lot of different styles of, of 
of people. And I had just been broken to the point of seeing empire building and seeing people talk. Um, and personally, you know, going out on the street for me and prophesying over people and praying over people and watching them be healed in the same ways that I'm seeing on YouTube that are throwing, you know, I'm, I, we're seeing this weekly and seeing people promote themselves with the same story for five years that, that they ha saw one time. It just makes it feel like, you know what, you're not engaging the Holy Spirit in a fresh way because you're so caught up in needing to promote it to, to build your own platform. And if you're a good storyteller, you'll be able to do that. that. But I realized, um, and I don't think it was me. I don't think it was my holiness. I don't think it was my maturity. I think it was to the point where I just couldn't handle another pseudo relationship where we were smiling at each other but in the background trying to build our own castles so that people would look at us um, and say, they are great Holy Spirit-filled Christians, because at the end of the day, that felt like no more than deflection to me, that if someone could look at how great I'm doing, then maybe they wouldn't see the sin in my life, they wouldn't see the secrets that I had, and I didn't want to do that, and so I took a risk with Sean to say, you know what, I'm not even going to go after how Sean might help me. I'm going to see how we can build the kingdom together. And making that choice, some might say, oh, no, 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 you're not allowing Sean to use his gifts in your life. Um, but I think for our specific relationship, we both just needed a brother. And we needed someone to be able to say, you know what? I'm not here to tap into your gifts. I'm here because you're valuable in a relationship to pour into me and to sharpen each other. And at the end of the day, that is what has moved us both forward more in our lives than helping each other get a book out or writing a book together or doing a podcast. Although we've brainstormed those things, I think we're at a point now where we value what the kingdom brings to our relationship much more than any type of movement in the Christian scene, specifically the Christian supernatural scene. So how... In, in in the development of this relationship, okay, so th this is what I'm hearing you guys really say, we're just going to set our our maybe bigger picture purpose in the kingdom, we're set aside, and we're going to develop authenticity within an actual relationship with one another. But with someone like Sean, you know, that's probably itching in the back of his mind, I care for this person, I see what they, what value they bring to the kingdom. How do you, Sean, be able to look at someone in, in this situation and say, I just want to help in any way that I can. I want to help. And if that's my gifting in a podcast or book promotion, whatever that is, I want to help because not only do I believe in you, the person, I believe in the assignment of your life and what you're doing for the kingdom. How do you present that to someone that has seen the fake, has seen the overhype and, and is really uh, just saying, I just don't want anything to do with that. How do you get them to understand the the pure motive of your heart? I That's think, a good uh, question. I, I think uh, kind of uh, we'll tag off of something Rod said a little bit earlier in the conversation is uh, we both were willing to just be vulnerable and share and be honest. Um, I feel like we had some upfront and kind of frank just conversations early on where uh, we just were very deliberate about deciding like we were both looking for a relationship. You know, I wasn't looking for um, another potential author to publish. You know, uh, I, I think one of the, one of the challenges you face when you're in the publishing space or when you have any level of platform or ability to help uh, people move a message forward or get a book deal is there are lots of people who want to be your friend because you can help them and you can do something for them. Um, but it, it seems like there aren't as many people who just want to be your friend for, you know, who you are and to get to know you and be in the journey with you. And so in, in the same way that maybe Rod was a little apprehensive, I'm always a little apprehensive too when uh, I meet new people because, man, if I had a dollar for every Facebook and Twitter message and email I get about somebody saying, hey, I see you work for a publisher, can you help me with my thing? And there's absolutely no interest in, in getting to know me. So in, in that same way, I probably had some of my walls um, going early on into a relationship. Um, but, you know, I, I think for me, what probably attracted me to, to the, like, just really cultivating a deep friendship with Rod is just his, his vulnerability and his honesty. You know, I'd read his book uh, before we did the podcast interview a number of years back, and you really, 
I, I really was able to key into a lot of his story. So out of the gate, as we got to hang out and get to know each other more, I just knew some of the vulnerable places that he'd shared in his book. And, uh, you know, we just really just got to a place right out of the gate where I think the Holy Spirit empowered us just to um, be linked right from the start in a way that I don't think either of us really expected. But I think that God knew we both desperately needed. We were, I would say, in a lot of ways, we were both very lonely men with really, not to say I don't have friends and Rod doesn't have friends, but neither of us had friends that we could do, go deep with and be honest with and just, you know, share and talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly of any part of our lives and just come out on the other side of that with, you know, I still love you, bro, and I'm, I'm going to pray for you right now. And I want to talk to you again soon. And um, I, I think for both of us, we just ended up in this place where we could just be honest and real with each other in a way that I don't think either of us really had uh, in significant ways. Maybe, you know, I would say we both have that in our marriage relationships, but in terms of male friendships, hanging out with the guys, I don't think either of us had that. And God just allowed us to create that. So how do you, um, in this cultivation and stuff, how how do you see that it has developed you guys into other areas that you never truly envisioned to begin with. Because what I'm hearing is you guys are just working. Let's just develop this friendship. But out of this friendship, there's had to be some things that have um, matured and developed in a way that you didn't see coming. What do you guys recognize now, looking back to where you're at right now, what has been birthed out of this? Let me, uh, let me start yeah. this one, Rod. Do you yeah, mind? go ahead. Um, one, one big thing I would mention, I was going to mention this earlier, it just came back to mind, um, is when I first met Rod, I was very on into my journey in the charismatic, spirit-empowered scene. So I, I grew up uh, very conservative because God has an awesome sense of humor. I ended up being the senior publicist over a charismatic brand, even though I'm like the you know least charismatic person in the room at that stage. Um, and so uh, Rod actually sharpened me and sort of challenged me and encouraged me as I'm growing in being a part of the Spirit Empowered Church. So I feel like he was just a key kind of cheerleader and advocate for me, somebody I could bounce questions off as I'm experience thing, experiencing things and going to different conferences and events and just seeing stuff that was all very new to me. Um, he was a safe person that I could just be like, hey, I saw this. What, what's your take on that? Um, I would also say, at least for me, another place that God has allowed uh, me to really grow in the midst of this relationship is in terms of uh, praying and having prophetic words and prophetic encouragement for people, Rod is probably the the person I've had the most words and encouragement for uh, in the past five years. And in terms of um, just uh, very detailed and dramatic visions when I'm praying, uh, a lot of that has been focused on uh, just ways to encourage and spur Rod forward. So uh, I, w- I would say a big thing for me, just to summarize, is that in terms of my spiritual development and being part of the Spirit Empowered, side of the church. Rod's been a, a good friend and a collaborator as I've grown. Yeah, and I think um, what happened when, you know, Sean, when you read Uncovered and we had the podcast and we were talking about it, it, it opened up the reality that vulnerability is going to create more space for us to explore together. And so as we started to do that, and as we started to talk about the Holy Spirit, you became so open to it that it didn't take long before you were in the room with people who were really going to slingshot you forward. And I felt like as you were being slingshotted forward, you know, you're sitting at the table with somebody like Bill Johnson, who's not a poser, who's just, (laughs) it's like sitting in the room with your grandpa who loves you and wants to help you move forward. It's like you reached back in the spirit and grabbed my hand and said, come with me. I'm going to share this stuff and I'm going to move you along with me. And I've never been in the room with those people. I don't really have a desire to like let the hem of, you know, Chris Valentin's robe touch my knee or something. I I don't need that. But it was neat to be a part of all of that with you And then to see change start to happen in my life and me begin to understand some of the supernatural things that were happening in my life, because I'm, I'm, you know, we'll be praying for people and their back will be healed and their feet will be healed, but we never prayed for the back. We only prayed for their feet. And I'm like, I don't know, that's weird. And then you're able to share a story. You're able to say that 
Rob, this is why I think this happened. And this is how I think this happened. And it was like putting tools in my tool belt. And so that's what I meant earlier when I said rubber band each other forward. Someone goes forward and then they pull the other one. And then they pull the other one so hard that that person goes in in front of them. And then the other one pulls the other back up. And it has just felt like that to me. And and that's what I feel like has been happening. And the only way that I can, I I would biblically kind of go there is say, you know, iron sharpens iron. And I think that we take that that language and we talk about accountability. So someone would be like, oh, you have a good relationship with Sean. That means you guys get in a room together and ask each other how much you looked at porn over the last two months or something. And I, and in the kingdom, we don't really have time to just <laughs> to aim for those sinless perfection and focus at ourselves and focus on ourselves and stare in the mirror. We have to chase after what the spirit of God is up to and go to those places. And if you can develop a bond in the spirit with someone, then wherever they go, you can benefit from that. It's something that I can relate to. I, you know, I I don't come from a background of um, being really, really dedicated to the church. We did go to church some. It was never what it is now. Uh, But for some reason, when I began to serve the Lord and get in ministry, I just could not stomach a lot of what you're talking about that you see in certain circles. Um, I've just never had the ability to handle it well. I, I, if I never walk into another green room ever again, I will not be disappointed. I mean, it's just, I, and I don't mean it to be disrespectful to anybody. I'm not, I, I really, I really, really honor and uh, respect other individuals for what they do in their time. But I don't have to be introduced to anybody. I don't have to be. But there is a reality that there are a lot of people. That's their goal. They build that platform. They build that persona. They're they're building, as you said, an, a little empire. And you can look, and it's more about them than it is the kingdom. And this is one of the things that even we host um, a conference every year, an annual conference called Prophetic Cultivation. And last year before the conference, the Lord spoke to me and said, uh, tell everybody to put their phones down. No Facebook lives, no Instagram lives, no nothing. I want you to totally engage in what is happening. Engage in the moment. Live in the moment. Because I've seen the videos. I mean, your Facebook live and people are videoing and they're like, oh, the glory is so thick and it's so strong. You can barely stand up. Hey, Susie, so good to see you on here. And you're like, really? <laughs> I mean, I mean, come on, this is not, there's, there's no authenticity in that. So, uh, I, I co-relate on this because this is something I really, really struggle with, um, because I, I, I just don't have the tolerance for it. I just, I don't, you know, I'm in a season in my life where I'm developing authentic relationships with people, because I believe if you develop authentic relationships, authenticity never has a need of promotion. Authenticity produces elevation but not promotion and and that and and i say it because we are so geared to think promotion 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 and people promote us but the truth of the matter is i'm learning that god and i know this is a a play on words right here but god doesn't necessarily promote you he elevates you in what it is that you're doing for his glory his name above all things so in saying all that how do you tell individuals? We'll start with Rod on this one because he's pastoring, he's leading a congregation. How how do you tell individuals that it truly is God first and everything else is secondary? And you know, how do you get past this? And I believe a lot of individuals, especially starting out in a social media driven world, there is that lure to be, you know, have that platform and that attention. How do you teach them or encourage them it is a truly god first life yeah to answer that question i have to take it back a few steps if you don't mind um yes, sir. and you know if you hear any cynicism in me feel free to call it out because i'm not a perfect individual and i'm not i'm not tr- I, I i'm genuinely trying to seek out the problems and to be a part of the healing of church in this country. And, you know, one of the things in dealing with the Holy Spirit, 
that Sean and I have been talking about is I wasn't going to go there unless it was authentic. I didn't want to talk about glory clouds and I didn't want to tell, I didn't want to hear the stories about some, somebody who's seen angels and, and like could just take an order ordinary moment and turn it into some fantastic story. I wanted to know if the person we prayed for got a house the next week or if they were healed or if the prophetic word was accurate to the T, because then when those things are happening, you know you're dealing with the Holy Spirit. And at this point in my life, I can say, yeah, if you want to see that type of stuff, I will walk you there tomorrow because I know exactly where it is. It is with the urban poor. And Jesus says, I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. So so if you want to see that stuff, I'll take you there and you can see it, but it's not in these manipulated spaces that can create a feeling because the Holy Spirit is not a feeling. The Holy Spirit is a person. And if you're going to encounter that person, your mind is going to be blown and and you won't even have the bandwidth to open Facebook Live. And you will realize in that moment, oh, this isn't something that is going to be used for my self-promotion. This is a moment that just needs to be breathed in And the only example I can think of that is in the movie Walter Mitty, where he's chasing after this photographer. And when he finally gets to that point where this photographer has been chasing some leopard that he wanted to get a picture of, and the guy doesn't even take the picture of the thing. He just says, you know, some moments are just meant to be moments. And when we're dealing with the Holy Spirit, I just, like you, Ryan, I'm very leery of anyone who's using that for self-promotion. So I say all that to say, now we're at church where everyone's learning to do that. And the odds are there's one person standing on a stage and they're just, you know, because they're on a stage and God is up, they're a little bit closer to God. And so we believe those, those things and we believe in, in all of that and we want to be like them. And so our only outlet to try to experience the empowerment of the kingdom, which we've accidentally confused for the empowerment of the empire, is to try to get on stage as well. And so we think, oh, I need to get a book or I need to get a speech or can I preach sometime? And the reality is if you want to experience the kingdom, friends, it's outside the walls and it's Oh, man, we lost it. He lost us right there. Hopefully, Rod will be back here in a minute. We'll see. <laughs> yeah, so how, how – whoop, are you back, Rod? So, sorry, I'm sorry. How right. long was I gone? Uh, you for just what, started – Six, seven down. seconds, sir. Yeah. Okay, so all I'm saying is, so Paul gets off the boat, and his shadow's passing over people, and he's healing people because he's not in the temple anymore. And so there's, there's just a disconnect when people want to experience the power of the kingdom. They think it's through self-promotion. And so I tell people, back to your original question, how do you help people say God first? You have to show them that the kingdom is not the empire. And if you really want to experience the power of God's kingdom, then you need to step into the place of where it is really invasively bringing its power. And that is to, it, that's not inside the castles that we've built. So how does that correlate uh, with you, Sean? Because you're, you're taking that same thing. You guys are co-laboring in this, but you're on the flip side, whereas he's pastoring people, he's, he's bringing people together, he's establishing ministry, uh, you know, in in an urban neighborhood, he's developing individuals, but you're on this uh, f- total opposite side. You know, this media mountain per se, and you're trying to help people understand who they are truly, and not build that empire, but truly help equip and advance the kingdom. How do you do it from your perspective? Uh, I th- I think the first key is to see people as people. Uh, You know, if I've discovered one thing in terms of dealing with high-profile leaders, people who are on stages, is they're often some of the most lonely people I encounter because, in in a sense, most people are always wanting something from them or coming to them with the perspective of what can you do for me. 
Um, and that's not to say I don't want a book deal with some of these high level people. I mean, that's what part of what my job is, is helping to bring amazing messages to light from uh, amazing authors. But um, I feel like that is one of the ways God has really gifted me is to just be able to see people as people and, and really try to see, you know, who, who are they in the kingdom? How does God see them? You know, if I can look through Jesus's eyes, how can I relate better to that person? So that's definitely uh, a primary lens, a primary key that I try to use just to keep myself humble and be able to see people for, for who they really are. Um, another piece is, you know, while I can teach you all of the best principles for how to build a platform and get the word out and all of that's very important, it's a huge part of my life. At the same time, I feel like there are patterns and seasons to um, our callings and assignments. I feel like you can be doing all the right things and working really hard, and then you can just hit this ceiling. And, and I truly believe a lot of times when we're hitting those ceilings, maybe, maybe we're going after the right thing and it's the right message, but it's just not the right time. And so if, if I've seen anything in the past decade, it's that God will promote and elevate when it's time. I feel like a lot of times, not to so say you shouldn't build a base and do all the right things, but usually that breakthrough that you're hoping for, that you're looking for, um, you're not quite ready for that assignment yet. And I, I often see that that breakthrough, it, it opens up right when it's the time, when you're ready to carry it, when you've been stretched and forged and, and hardened enough where you can actually um, propel that assignment and succeed in that assignment and move forward versus if you'd been able to shove your way through that door you know, a year or two earlier than when God had it on the timeline for you, you, you might have seen some success, you probably would have done okay, uh, but at the same time, if you aren't ready, that sort of thing can, can just crush you and destroy you, because you just don't have the character and the experience you need to carry that thing forward. So, uh, you know, you can do all the right things, but you also have to just be honest and conscious of that there is a, a timing aspect uh, for the journey that God has you on. Can I add There's to that? Of, go ahead. Go, go ahead. Yeah. You know, one thing I would throw into that is you will never see a national servanthood conference. And some of that is what is Jesus calling us to do and where are the miracles and where are is the supernatural stuff that's happening that everyone's chasing and, and building their platforms on. And so I might even add to that. There's a difference between a bigger platform and elevation. And we have to have eyes to see how God is elevating us in the kingdom, because sometimes that is very backwards of what elevation is in the world and in this empire building culture that we live in around Christianity. And so, man, for someone to just desire so much to have a big platform, they're not going to find the authenticity and the vulnerability and they're not going to find those liminal spaces that actually allow them to take shape in the fire because they're not willing to go to those spaces where Jesus really wants to meet them. And, and if all they're chasing after is platform, they might be elevated, but that's where we see all these people have these huge crashes. They might be elevated, but at the end of the day, my question is, what are we doing in the kingdom? You can be elevated in the kingdom and nobody see you. And if you're not okay with that, you probably don't have any business <laughs> talking about it. Can I, uh, I just want to pick up on Rod, use the word liminal spaces. And I think that's a word that we started using together uh, back in December. I'd read Carmen Joy Imes' book, and she talks about, uh, you know, Israel and different people going through these liminal spaces. Uh, and uh, I think that's sort of a, a, a phrase, if you will, to kind of capture the essence of our journey together is, throughout the six, seven years that we've been good friends, we've just been s stepping through together a series of liminal spaces in our family lives, uh, in our careers, what we're doing in the workplace, and um, you know, sort of hand in hand, we've just been kind of making our way through these in-between spaces and uh, going through kind of these seasons of coming out on the other side, shifted and change, but uh, like I feel like that's the rhythm we've been in over and over. Like we'll 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 get through or accomplish one thing, and then we step step across that threshold uh, into the next thing. So yeah, liminal liminal spaces a, a good good way to describe our journey together. So you guys have definitely grown. You've developed even ideas. I mean, you guys are using words that make a lot of people uncomfortable. You've talked about shame you know, identity, platforms, uh, trust. 
vulnerability. I mean, these are things that a lot of people, um, we're taught in Western Christianity to kind of sweep underneath the rug and not really talk about our issues. Um, we're in Western Christianity. If we have problems, we're, we're told to go to often, and I'm, I'm not against doctors, but go to someone that can prescribe you something to get over it instead of let's learn how to lean on our brothers and sisters in Christ and walk these things through. Um, what do you think is the next phase in, in the relationship and how you guys are moving forward in laying things out for the kingdom? What, what, what does it look like ahead for you guys? You want to take that or me? <laughs> uh, I'll, I guess I'll start us off and, and you, uh, you wrap that one up. Uh, you know, sure. I, think, I think we've had a sense for many years that we're supposed to collaborate on some things and do some things together. Um, I think we would both agree that that season just hasn't been maybe until now. I feel like we're stepping into a season where God's going to give us some things to uh, work on together. You know, I, I think to some, to some extent that could be a book. We actually started talking about a book back in December that we've developed an outline for uh, that we need to keep moving forward on. So I, I think that's one of the places God's calling us to collaborate. Um, I think also at some point, Rod and I will probably be teaching and training and coaching some people together somewhere. I don't know what that looks like exactly, but um, I feel like our, our messages and, and just how we're kind of joined heart and spirit wise really would lend itself to uh, really helping to encourage a group of people and move them forward in something. I don't, I don't know what that, that looks like. Um, and so, yeah, I also, I guess the other thing I would say too, is just the, we're both in, in newer seasons. I re- I transitioned to Destiny Image this past year. Um, Rod moved into this church plan and this new role and they've been, they're growing significantly. So, um, you know, I, I think the other side of it is just being there to support each other as we sort of step into the unknown. Like we both, uh, 2019, I would say for me and Rod was like probably both of our, in many ways, were a worst year. Like it was just awful. We both went through really super challenging things in our workplaces and just relationships. And it was like when it, when it got worse, the worst, and we were in, in the bottom of that pit, then God like brought us out to this amazing other side where we're both in places now where we have a lot more space and a lot more freedom. And um, it's, it's very different than things were a year ago. So that's my answer, Rod. What do you have to say? Yeah. When I, uh, you know, when I, when I'm at church and, or I'm out on the street and people come up to me and they mention like Joyce Meyer and have you heard this thing she did? Or they mention somebody, I just want to look at them and I want to say, you know, that the same Holy spirit is inside of you and there's no difference whatsoever. And I think one of the things that God is doing in Sean's life is that he's been in the room with everybody. And some people would say, oh, wow, Sean's been in the room with every major Christian leader. And I just believe that for him, um, God's moving him into a time where the Spirit of God has put a lot inside of him, and it's time for it to come out. And it's time for people to listen because he's been being shaped and formed and I think Sean's propensity is to sit back and interview and, and lift others up. But I just feel incredibly strongly that it's time for him to really show people what it's like to live the Christian life in a real and authentic way that engages the full power of what the Holy Spirit is and who the Holy Spirit is. And for me, I just want to see the church, the body the gathering of believers, take the words of Jesus seriously. And if we can do that, then we can, you know, leave a footprint. And so I think that's where we collide. And I think that's where we, we come together. And so when we're talking about, you know, maybe writing a book about liminal space or doing an e-course or speaking together, I think all of those things will happen. I just think that it's important for us that we're allowing the spirit of God to lead these things because I watch too many people give really good speeches and I'm, I just feel kind of tired of it. I want to see people impacted and I want to see lives transformed and I want to see the church empower the gifts of the people so that this world can be reached for Christ. Yeah. One, one thing I would take onto that too is 
I feel like we've both entered into a space where we're pursuing our own callings, where we're not actually going after the things that other people say we're good at or we that we should pursue. Um, I feel like a lot of the the veneer's been sanded off and we've gotten to be refinished in a sense that Rod and I are both going after the things that we deeply feel God is asking us to do, not the things we're supposed to do, not the things that you know other people tell us we should be doing, uh, but really stepping into that place where um, our, the things that God gifted us with, our abilities, our natural talents, where that intersects exactly with what God has called us to do destiny-wise. I feel like that's the space that we're both stepping into right now. So one thing I would like for both of you to do, because I believe that anyone that could be potentially listening to this would find some area in their life where they go, I can relate to that. Um, You said something, Rod, early in this podcast, and it has stuck with me about vulnerability makes room for trust. Mm -hmm. Um, What I would like for you guys to do both is possibly, you know, kind of thinking that you're actually speaking to an individual and how do you encourage that individual to become vulnerable to someone that they can actually build this authentically pure relationship with? Yeah, I will encourage by saying this. You you may believe that people aren't safe. But the reality is they just don't know what it's like to be in the room and not have coverings. And you don't either at this point. And I know you've tried. And I know you've been hurt. But you know, Jesus doesn't say through John, if you sample the light, you'll have fellowship. Or if you try it once, you'll enter into intimacy. He says, if you walk in it. And I've experienced pain and I've experienced getting my knees taken out from under me. And I've experienced the people using my vulnerability against me. And it's all been worth it because when you find the spaces because you walk in vulnerability and humility and authenticity. When you find those spaces, they will restore the years that all of the pain has eaten. And they will wipe away every tear. And they'll allow you to cry those tears as they hold you. And they'll allow you to heal. And until, until we open those wounds and until we go there, we're not we're just we're just bandaging or hitting ourselves somewhere else on the body so that it hurts more than the thing that hurt before or we're sitting in blame and unforgiveness and the reality is that the only place that you can experience those some of those true principles of the kingdom is to is to keep walking and keep finding and keep searching for those spaces where you can be fully you and where you can receive others as fully them. And I'll end it by saying, you know, Dallas Willard says that a lot of us think the miracles and the the things of God's kingdom were for just for the apostles or that we don't have enough faith to actually experience those things. And all the while, God has given us some very simple things to do that if we would just do them, and I'm speaking of vulnerability and I'm speaking of brotherhood and I'm speaking of of intimacy with people that if we would just do them they would fast forward us into the kingdom and my prayer for you friends is that you find those spaces where people are more concerned about your relationship being right than they are about them being right and as you move forward in those spaces I, my prayer is that everyone there is open to the actual move of the holy spirit that doesn't need to be on Facebook Live, but can transform your life and be cherished in your heart, like Mary, who cherished Jesus in her heart and didn't run out and share it with everyone to build her own platform. And that's where a lot of real power lies. And my prayer is that we in the church can return to that space because it's a beautiful thing to be at Jesus' feet. Uh, I guess my response to that would be, uh, in terms of being vulnerable, 
you just have to realize out of the gate that that can be awkward for people because we're not we're not used to doing that in church. We just put on our happy face and hey, I'm fine. You're fine. It's all good. So uh, just know that out of the gate, it can be a little strange for people if you try to go deep and be vulnerable with them. Uh, another thing I would say is those core relationships, those uh, sharpening relationships, they're not always with the people you think they're going to be with. It's not always with the person on the stage or, you know, because, because there are a lot of people, not to say the people on the stage are fronting or posing, but a lot of people put on this happy face and it's maybe not, you know, what's truly going on in their life. So a lot of times the people who sharpen us the most are the people we, la- we least expected. And so, um, you know, I would, I would encourage as, as you're trying to step into being more vulnerable, just really pray about it and ask the Holy Spirit to give you discernment about pe- who, it, who it would be safe to open up to. Um, and the last thing I would add to that is just remember in a, 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 a friendship or relationship, a sharpening uh, kind of relationship is it needs to be reciprocal. It can't just be, hi, I'd like to sit down and just barf all over you and just dump all my stuff on you. And can you pray for me and help me feel better? I know there are times when we, we just need to unload and we need to be encouraged. Um, but in terms of like a long-term sharpening relationship where there's back and forth, um, you know, you need to be able to carry the other person's burdens too. So it can't be just totally one-sided where you're always taking, but you're never giving anything. So those would be kind of my my three encouragements. Um, you know, just remember it's going to be weird. Uh, pray for discernment and and see who the Holy Spirit highlights to you. Um, and just remember that it's both give and take in terms of having a, a real quality and honoring relationship. Well, I have to say this has absolutely been one of my favorite conversations I've ever had. Um, just the the depth of what's been shared here. It, it reminded me of something I had to go back in my notes and find it on my phone. I write things down on my phone all the time and I actually found it was the fallen doesn't displease God as much as it pleases him when we get back up. Amen. Mm -hmm. And, you know, this, this whole reality is in, in, in everything, we all get knocked down, but we have to learn how to get back up. And the beauty of it is when we do develop these kind of relationships, the getting up is a lot more probable, a lot more manageable. Uh, because we have people that is there to help us in that journey to walk with us and stuff and everything. So I just a huge shout of appreciation, Sean, for arranging this. I sincerely appreciate it. It's first time I've ever even spoke with uh, Pastor Rod Tucker uh, <laughs> in Kalamazoo. Uh, but I really appreciate this time, uh, gentlemen, for you to be able to take out. We're recording this pretty early in the day. Uh, as we're all sipping on coffee and stuff and everything, but uh, I appreciate the time that you've taken out of your day. So how can people connect? Uh, We'll go with Rod and then Sean. How can people connect and find and discover what you guys are doing? You know, as I'm I'm taking part in this podcast, I'm realizing the scope of what you're trying to do, Ryan, and who you're trying to reach and help and love. And probably just encourage and empower. And so, you know, uh, avoiding all the websites, Rod Tucker says.com or edisonchapel.com or growbeyond.com, all these things that we've done. Um, and without promoting books and sermons and things, my cell phone number is 605 760 three, four, two, five. If you're listening and you want to talk, um, this is about God's kingdom and I'm open to that. I think Sean gets too many calls and emails to do that. I do, you know, I do speaking all over and I, and I, you know, writing and and things like that, but in, in church consulting for churches to engage in discipleship better. And I'm, I'm willing to do that with anybody. And if you want to do that, just call me. But at the same time, like if you just need, if you need to talk, you need to run ideas by if you're discontent with church and you want to see it be more what God wants it to be, then yeah, 605-760-3425. That's my cell. Shoot me a text. Give me a call. We'll set up a time and I would be happy to talk with anybody. 
Man, you set the bar high. I'm not going to give out my cell phone number, but uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll give it out when they call me. So, perfect, <laughs> perfect. I like it. I get a small degree of anonymity. Uh, now, if you want to find me, probably the easiest place to start is my website. Uh, that's SeanTabbitt.com. That's where all my podcast episodes go up. Uh, you know, search for me on social media. Uh, my name, you can find me. I'm on all the major platforms. Uh, if you want to connect with me, you've got an idea for a future podcast episode or whatnot. Uh, maybe you have the, the next great book idea. Uh, an easy way to reach me is uh, show at seantabbitt.com. That's uh, the email address for the podcast. And um, yeah, if you see me out on social media, tag me, tweet at me, whatnot. I, I love to interact online. And, um, you know, uh, in terms of my podcast, you know, m- my goal is always to. And, and I think this kind of speaks to the Rod, this season that Rod Stein is stepping into. My goal is to elevate authors and to give them an opportunity to be a part of my platform and just share about uh, their book, their message, what they have going on. Um, it's, it's my show is definitely a, a Q and A format, so I, I I definitely talk, but it's mostly the author who's my guest who's talking. And so um, I'm actually walking out a creative process right now to put myself out more in front of the microphone and the camera, if you will. Um, I'm going to be doing some pilots for a, a Supernatural-themed TV show. Think of it as Sid, Sid Roth's at Supernatural without the reenactments. I just don't have a budget for reenactments. Um, I can this... do those for you. That's Thank... fine. Okay, good. Good. I'll call you about that. I got your number now. Um, so, so that is one <laughs> of the ways that uh, God is really challenging me this year, that um, I was actually just thinking about this and kind of praying about it yesterday. You know, I've spent so much of my career elevating other people, and not that that's going away. Uh, I think that I'll still be a core part of what I do. Um, but it it is time for me to I, I hesitate to say stop hiding, but um, you know that I, I'm in a place where I have more to share. Like I've I've gotten to the other side of this journey, um, and actually leaving my job at Baker that'd be a totally different conversation, but. Like that was a last step in the journey to walk out grieving what I'd given five years of my life to as I transitioned into this new space with Destiny Image. Love it. It's fantastic. I'm right where God wants me to be. Um, but that was kind of a, a, a key part in finishing my orphan journey, if you will. Um, so all of that kind of leads into um, taking a leap of faith to be willing to go out front more and you know share more of what I want or what God is asking me to share from my life, my journey. Uh, versus always uh, sitting behind the microphone and letting other people's talk. So I don't know quite what that looks like, um, but that's going to be a key part of one of the things I'm partnering with God to walk out in 2020. So all that to say, SeanTabbitt.com. That's where you can find me. Well, I love it. Um, You know, part of the heart of this podcast in particular is to really challenge ourselves in some of the things that we believe. I don't I, I believe I think that there's a lot of individuals that profess Christianity, but they don't know really what they believe because they confess a belief based off what they've been told. They've never really been challenged um, in that, whether it's scripture, whether it's real life moments, you know, um, in, in this process. So um, there, there's always this walking through of a lot of things. So I, I love having this conversation. I love breaking and being very raw and real. So gentlemen, I appreciate you so, so much and your willingness to do that. I also want to say for everybody that's out there, you still have time to be a part of our reserved family gathering that is coming up March the 27th through the 29th in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee, this is a limited space. We're only taking a total of 50 individuals, and our whole purpose is we're coming together to sit down at the table to develop authentic relationships with men and women in the body of Christ. My wife and I are going to sit down. There's no sermons, no preaching, no teaching, nothing like that. We're going to hear from you, the individual. We're going to hear about what you're doing in ministry, what you're doing in life, how we can pray with you, how we can develop that relationship. We're spending two days in the mountains there, Friday and Saturday, cultivating that and really working on that and helping uh, establish authenticity in kingdom relationships to help one another. Um, I travel full time as an itinerant minister, as well as the development overseeing of a school of ministry here in Florida. But um, you know, when I travel, you know, a lot of times you're going in and out, in and out, in and out. And you don't get to develop these relationships. And it's been on my heart to really 
bring this together. So the reserved family gathering is that there's still a little bit of room left to re- make your reservations for that. You can find that on our Facebook page. Uh, also, I'll have the link on the website as well. But I do have to give the shameless plug because I do have a book that's out right now. Uh, of course, Sean was a part of that. And, um, you know, th- this is something and it is tough for me to even talk about things like this. But I believe in the purpose of this word that is in this, because in this book, it's it's not really my opinion or my ideas or my thoughts. It is uh, grounded in the word. But then I share not only a personal journey of my life concerning my mother, I share some other stories to back up the word itself. So I do want to encourage everybody to look up how to contend for your miracle, how supernatural encounters and faith work together to bring answered prayers. You can get it on Amazon, Books a Million, Barnes and Noble, ChristianBooks.com, Destiny Image. If you want a signed copy, um, you can order that through our website as well, and we'll get that to you. Gentlemen, I appreciate you so, so much. Uh, It really has been an honor for me to be a part of this today. It has meant the world to me that you took time uh, to be a part of this. And um, any final existing thoughts? I just, I found your book on Amazon here. So I'm going (laughs) to just go ahead and get that. Um, (laughs) There we go. Thank you. Thank you, Rod, for doing your part to uh, improve the book's ranking and for helping me to stay employed at Destiny Image. Uh, your, your, your book sales do, do help a bunch of us continue doing the great work we do and feed our families as well. Uh, you know, I, I, I guess the, the one thing I would say is uh, my final thought is be on the journey God has you on. Um, you, know, we, we, you know, we all have different ways that we do cool things. Like Ryan got to be on Sid Ross' show that's going to be airing soon. I get to hang out with lots of cool people. Um, Rod has a church plan and is, is doing things. Those are our journeys. Those, those are the paths that God has us on right now. Um, so, you know, and if, if you think the stuff we're doing is cool, that's great. I'm, I'm, I'm glad. I, I'm, I hope you're encouraged by the stuff we talked about today. Um, but really press into what God's calling you to do. What's your path? What, what does God want you to step into? Don't, don't mimic other people. You know, you, you don't need to, you know, be the next Bill Johnson. If God's calling you to be that, that's great. But um, don't pursue somebody's, somebody else's path or somebody else's calling. Go after what's yours. And that's, that's where you're going to have true success and true fulfillment. And uh, you're going to just, I feel like that elevation will come because you're right where God wants you to be. Amen. Well, guys, thank you so much. Everybody else listening, uh, we appreciate you. Make sure you share this podcast episode. Make sure you encourage people to subscribe, not only to the Blacksmith Chronicles, uh, subscribe to Sean's uh, the Sean Tabit show uh, on podcast platforms, Apple, everywhere else. Even Rod has a podcast that you can get connected with and subscribe to his podcast as well. We're a bunch of podcasters, but we appreciate you. We love you all. And we bless you in the name of Jesus.